When we broke the word geography apart, we learned that geo refers to the earth or the world. And we learned that graphy talked about a way of showing or describing the world. But there's another word out there that kind of sounds similar, geology. Geology, geography, geography, geology. What's the difference? I mean, duh, I know the end part is different. It doesn't use graphy, but rather logi. Logi is yet another suffix gifted to the world by the Greeks. It means to learn or study something. It's the same base of the word logic in English today, which refers to understanding how things are or how they work. Of course, you probably right away think of other sciences that use logi in their name, like biology, which is the study of life, or psychology, which is the study of the mind, or zoology, which is the study of animals. So here's the main difference when it comes to defining these two similar words. Geology specifically means a study of the solid physical earth, the hard stuff that our planet is made of. Geography, on the other hand, is a way of describing or showing everything on the earth, and it includes a whole lot more than just the solid physical stuff. In fact, geology is one of the key components of physical geography. It helps us understand the physical material that makes up our planet. And what is that material? Rocks. Did somebody say rocks? Oh. Hey, Rocky. It's Steve, but you always call me Rocky. Rocks cover the surface of the Earth. Plus, they make up most of the matter below the surface, too. No matter where we look on the Earth, we find all sorts of rocks. At the Earth's crust, they are usually in their solid, hard, can easily break a window form. <laughs> below the Earth, or when volcanoes erupt, we find rocks in its hot, molten, make you dead if you touch it form. Whew. Rocks are any solid mass of minerals. Minerals are non-living elements that form a physical structure of any kind. So like ice? No, not ice. I hate to break it to you, April, but it's non-living and it forms a physical structure. That doesn't, you're not even supposed to, we're, we're not talking about this right now, okay? There are many different kinds of rocks made of all sorts of minerals. These categories tell us how the rocks were made in the first place. Igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Not ice! First, let's talk about igneous rocks. When we talked about geomorphology, we talked about volcanoes. Volcanoes are caused when the hot molten rock found below the crust of the earth breaks through the crust. Sometimes this molten rock is able to escape onto the surface of the earth. When this molten rock is underground, we call it magma. But when it breaks through the earth's surface, it gets a new name, lava. When this happens, it's disaster time. Lava is ridiculously hot hot enough to burn up just about anything it touches. So when a volcano erupts and lava starts to flow, you better get stepping, because I mean anything it touches. We often think of volcanoes with violent explosions, where the tops of the mountains blow off and spread damage far and wide. This is called an explosive eruption, and it's just like how my dad reacts when someone changes the thermostat. Explosive eruptions happen when pressure builds up underground from magma that is blocked off from the surface. This pressure eventually explodes, blowing hot volcanic ash and rocks for kilometers in every direction. Another type of eruption is called an effusive eruption. In an effusive eruption, you don't have a massive explosion. Instead, lava steadily flows out of a volcano onto the ground or into the sea. They're still plenty dangerous. I mean, if you touch it, you're dead. Touching stuff and dying is basically the definition of dangerous. Luckily, lava moves very slowly on land. So if you see lava flowing your way, remember that you're probably fast enough to run away. Volcanoes don't just erupt on land. Sometimes they erupt at the bottom of the sea. As volcanoes erupt underwater, the lava cools and hardens into solid rock. 
when this happens again and again, it builds higher and higher until at last the rocks emerge from the ocean as islands. Just hope you're not a fish swimming by while lava is flowing into the sea. You're like me now, kid. When lava cools off, whether underwater or on the land, you end up with hard, solid rocks. These rocks that come from the cooled lava are, you guessed it, igneous rocks. The next type of rock is a sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rocks are formed by minerals piling up on one another and getting so squished together that they create a hard rock. Did someone say sedentary? No, sedimentary rocks are made from what we call sediment. Oh, sure. I can be sedimental. Sed, i, ment is particles that come from other things, soil or other rocks which have been weathered by wind or water. Sediment can even come from organic matter, plants and animals, as they break down into elements when they die. I'm made of dead stuff? Sediments get carried from one place to another, usually by water, wind, or glaciers. But without other forces acting on it, it sinks down, lays around, and piles up. Kind of like that guy. I saw a glacier once. It moved me. Eventually, the journey of the sediment ends, and enough of it gathers together in one place. When enough sediment collects in one area, two processes result, compaction and cementation. Compaction is when these sediments get squeezed together in some way. Usually this happens because of weight pressed on top of them by other sediment. This pressure squeezes the sediments together. Hey, hey more big rock guys like me. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, hey. No, stop that. No, get out. Oh, that hurts. Cementation is a process that works kind of like glue and makes these sediments stick together. As the compaction happens, little amounts of liquid are squeezed out of the sediments. Usually this liquid is water. In the process, this causes the sediments to firmly stick together. Oh, you guys are heavy. <sighs> These processes of compaction and cementation together are called lithification. Lithification is the process by which sediments ultimately become sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are more likely than other kinds of rocks to form closer to our Earth's surface. In fact, about 75% of the above ground land surface is made of sedimentary rocks. Well, 8% of the total Earth's crust is sedimentary rock. Stay active, kids. As you can see, bad things happen when you're sedimentary like me. Finally, let's talk about metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks are rocks that change and transform. They often start out as igneous or sedimentary rocks, but they are subjected to more heat and pressure. Under that heat and pressure, the rocks begin to change. The parts of rock might break down in the heat and then reform in different ways under the pressure. Because there is a lot of heat and a lot of pressure underground, a lot of the Earth's crust is made up of metamorphic rocks. Wherever you are standing on this planet, there are several kilometers of the Earth's crust directly under your feet. And there are probably rocks of all kinds, igneous, sedimentary, metamorphic, and not ice. Thanks to geology, we learn a lot about how the Earth is made. Without geology, we wouldn't get far with the rest of geography. Geography joke time, or geology joke time, huh? What did the rock say to the geologist? Don't take me for granted. Stop that. Not again. Get out of here. What? Man, let's go crawl under a rock and die. Anyway, keep coming back. 
Engage Global Storytelling is teaching you about the world. Geography, geology, geomorphology, a bunch of ologies, a bunch of ographies. We are the Ography Ology Central. You can learn everything about the world by coming to us. See you next time.